government. Madam Speaker, sometime in 2007, we were sent a number of letters by a member in this house who shall remain nameless. A male, well at least, I hope I got the sex right, but then again, the person has some male attributes, so I'd uh, really suggest that it is indeed a male. But anyway, Madam Speaker, we were sent copies of some letters that were actually sent, one to the Attorney General and one to Ambassador David Shaul, as well as a response from Sir David Shaul to the Honorable Wilmoth Daniel. And I'd like to read these letters, Madam Speaker, into the minutes of the Parliament. And these letters created fundamental concerns for us. Obviously, you'd recognize that when I read the contents of these letters, that even the Minister, Madam Speaker, of St. Philip South had fundamental issues with the way in which certain contracts or proposals, as the letter indicated, were awarded. I think he was very concerned about the obvious breaches in the awarding of these contracts. And he was so concerned, Madam Speaker, that he did not only deal with it orally, he actually reduced his concerns in writing. Madam Speaker, I want to draw to the attention of this Honorable House a letter dated January 20, 2006, penned by, the, by His Excellency David Shaw, addressed to Sir Charles O. Williams, and it reads as follows. There, sir, at a meeting held on January 19, 2006, with the Honorable Prime Minister Baldwin Spencer, Honorable Minister of Finance and Economy Dr. Errol Court, and myself as coordinator of the Intergovernmental Working Group for CWC 2007, it was agreed that the government would engage the services of your company to continue the infrastructure works at Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. In an effort to proceed with the necessary works, thus enabling the on-time completion of the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium, the government is committed to the following. And he has here a list of payments. The first payment, Madam Speaker, as indicated in this letter, is a payment of two million Eastern Caribbean dollars within 14 days upon com commencement of work as payment for the mobilization on the Cricket Ground Stadium. The Ambassador further indicated that two million Eastern Caribbean dollars as the first monthly payment upon receipt of invoice within 60 days from the date work commences on the project. And he also stated that monthly payments for works completed shall comply with the IC terms and conditions which shall be based on an approved bill of rates which your company has already submitted. Letter continues, we look forward to your company's acceptance of the above terms. And he says here that you are advised to communicate your acceptance soonest so that you can commence work immediately and we proceed hastily with the preparation of the necessary documentation and legal approvals. So here's a situation, Madam Speaker, in which the Ambassador is actually acknowledging that there's no documentation and no legal approvals, but yet still he has basically indicated to C.O. Williams that they have been awarded a contract, these are the amounts they will pay, how they will pay it, but the approvals will come subsequently. This letter, Madam Speaker, was copied to the Honorable Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Works and Communication. And I want to remind you that it's a letter dated January 20, 2006, almost a year after we raised the issue in this Honorable House as to what exactly the government was doing to prepare the country, to get the country in a state of readiness for Cricket World Cup 2007. Now, this letter from David Shaw was copied to the minister, the member for St. Philip South, who obviously became very concerned, Madam Speaker. It is very clear from this letter that the member for St. Philip South and the entire Public Works Department was completely out of the loop. And rightfully so, Madam Speaker, the member for St. Philip South became agitated, very concerned about the issue, and then wrote to 
Ambassador David Shaw on the 23rd of January 2006, questioning his authority to extend such proposals, or in other words, contract to CEO Williams. I imagine that the Honorable Member, recognizing that as an ambassador, Ambassador David Shaw obviously should be primarily involved in strengthening the diplomatic relations between Antigua, Barbuda, and China, not to be integrally involved in the awarding of contracts, and to go as far as usurping the authority of the Minister and the Department of Public Works. So, Madam Speaker, I have here a letter on dated the 24th of January, in which the Honorable or His Excellency David Shaw responded to the concerns of the Minister, Honorable Wilmot Daniel, the member for St. Philip South, who challenged the legitimacy of David Shaw to preside over this project. And I imagine there are other concerns in the sense that Ambassador David Shaw has no expertise in this field, Madam Speaker. He doesn't have the requisite training to preside over this type of project. In fact, Madam Speaker, I'm told that Ambassador David Shaw does not even have a CXC. So he has no training in project management, but yet still, he was placed in charge of the single largest capital project ever to have taken place in the history of this country. And I have no doubt, Madam Speaker, these are some of the concerns for the member for St. Philip South. Anyway, having raised the concerns, Ambassador David Shaw responded to the minister on the 24th of January, three days later, Madam Speaker, and he indicated, or four days later, and he indicated in that letter, letter addressed to Minister Daniel, I'm in receipt of your letter dated 23rd January 2006. I wish to advise that the proposal dated January 20th, 2006, to which your letter referred, was seen and sanctioned by the Prime Minister before dispatch, and a copy was sent to you for your information. The Embassy's Register for Hand-Delivered Mails indicated that the copy was delivered and received on your behalf by your Secretary on the above date. See specimen signature attached. Please find and close another copy of the proposal dated 20th January 2006, which is self-explanatory. In other words, Honorable Ambassador, saying to the Minister, look, I've already gotten approval of the Prime Minister, don't waste my time. This is a situation, who are you to question me? Prime Minister has given me authority to do what I did. Now, Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member for St. Philip South did not stop there. He says he's a point man. He's really an adopted point man. He's really from point. He's from Bolands. But in the true spirit, Madam Speaker, of a point man, the Honorable Member for St. Philip South decided, hey, I ain't stopping this. I'm not accepting this. You can't tell me as ambassador that the Prime Minister gave you the right to preside over this project when you have no expertise so to do, bypassing public works, the Minister, the Director of Public Works. The member over there said, no, this is not right. And you know what he did, Madam Speaker? He then, on, the, on February 2nd, 2006, and I have no doubt that he would have consulted with other, other colleagues, and perhaps he may have had some legal advice on this issue. And he was so concerned, Madam Speaker, that he wrote to the Attorney General of this country, the Chief Legal Advisor to the government, expressing his concerns. And in a letter dated February 2nd, 2006, Minister Daniel wrote to the Attorney General, and the letter reads as follows. Dear Attorney General, I enclose a copy of a letter from Ambassador His Excellency David Shaw to Sir Charles Williams, CEO Williams Construction and Tiga Limited. You will note from Sir David's letter, the Honorable Prime Minister Baldwin Spencer, Honorable Minister of Finance and Economy Dr. Errol Court, and Sir David are the persons who made the proposal to CEO Williams Construction and Tiga Limited. I also enclose a copy of a letter addressed to me from His Excellency in which he describes the above letter to Sir Charles Williams as the proposal dated January 20th, 2006, 
which he claims 